Yo, what's going on? And welcome back to some more of The Last Flame. Now, last time we were playing on the prologue version, but now the full version is out. So we will be playing on the full version. Um, now, the full version is still in early access. You could probably, maybe you could make out the numbers up there. I believe it says 0.6.4. So that's probably the version number. Um, so there's still a bit of numbers left until it gets to 1.0. Um, and they said that the updates till 1.0 will be free updates to the game. So hopefully the game will just continue to get better. Um, but right now, uh, as far as I know, the full version will have an extra act on top of what we saw in the prologue. I'm unclear as to if there's more heroes. We only did two runs in the prologue, so I'm not sure if all the heroes were there. I know that there's like 58 heroes or something and a bunch of items and stuff. I don't know if they were all in the prologue or not, um, but at least now we know that the there's all of them that currently exist there. Um, so anyways, I don't see any reason to stall. It might tutorialize us again because this is uh, technically like a separate install of the game. Um, but let's get started because we already kind of have an idea of what's going on. Uh, we will start. I guess I could explain um, what it is as well. Do we need a tutorial? We'll keep it on just at the very beginning. So um, in case anything has changed. Um, but to just explain briefly, uh, The Last Flame is a auto battler um, but it's a roguelike um, pve auto battler so we're going to be playing against uh ai stages or stages that are randomized but <clears throat> not controlled by other players um, so a little bit different from like a tft or an auto chess where you play against some set in stone stages um, but you also then play against other players. There's not going to be any other players. Our goal is to make it through every challenge and defeat the final boss. Um, I believe there's an extra final boss after Act 3. So that's going to be our goal. So far, we've only seen up to Act 2. Um, and it seems like it's making us play again on the starting difficulty. So I wouldn't expect it to be too awfully difficult. Doesn't look like there's anything new here. So we'll just go ahead and go through that. Uh, this is just going to explain to you what all the things that we currently see on the screen are, and we kind of already know that. So, I already see this character is the tank we used last time. So why don't we try and use new characters? All the other ones we have not used before. Um, real quick, you could see that the range, this one's an ethereal damage dealer, is a caster, and does burns. So how does this work? It's kind of AoE, huh? Cast a lava eruption, applying four burns, increases damage it deals from burns. <clears throat> and this character also gains attack speed. So this seems like a really good uh, DPS character to choose. This character also does ethereal. So we could consider grabbing two ethereal characters. This guy's melee and a damage dealer. We probably don't want two ranged damage dealers right now. So I'm looking at either this guy. What does this spell do? Increasing nearby allies defense. So does he not increase his defense then? I can't really tell. He also has life steal. Maybe he does increase his defense. It just says nearby allies, right? Some games consider themselves an ally, whereas some games don't. But usually those games would say other ally. I mean, I guess that would imply that they do consider themselves an ally. But this guy seems like a good tank to start. He doesn't particularly synergize, but... Or maybe I just go this guy, because then we have two... What do you do? Gains 20% ethereal amplification, amplification when the fight starts. Gains attack speed. Sure, let's grab these two guys. And then a relic, 30% discount at the shop. I, I don't really like stuff like that. Researching was interesting. What did researching do again? Hold up. How do I... 
can't rem Can I not look at it? Choose a relic. I guess it says it right there, so I didn't really need to press tab. So the shop could be good. 30% off is a lot. We got to remember that the run's going to be longer now because we have an entire another act to get through. So this becomes more useful. But this also becomes more useful. All of these become more useful. I'm going to go with the discount of the shop. So since we picked something like that, our goal is going to be to make sure we hit a shop. Looks like it's only going to be possible to hit one shop. Ah, it's kind of awkward, right? Because I like to do more difficult things to make us stronger. So maybe I go here. That way we can hit two elites and then this shop and the campfire. Sure, let's do that. Alright, so we kind of already know about placing heroes and stuff, so I'm not going to be too worried about it. And if you remember, or if you haven't seen before, we can change who the hero ag or who the enemies aggro to by just clicking on or placing the guy who we want to have aggro last. Um, but in this case, since this character is further away, it's only if they're equal distance that it does that. Uh, anyways, let's get started. We're probably going to win this uh, first fight fairly easily. And then we get another hero. What are we looking for now? What do you do? Heal, bleed, debuff. So we currently do burns. We've used this character before. We have not used you, but you do shock. You're also kind of an AOE damage dealer. So the problem is, is these are all damage dealers, right? Kind of already have a ranged damage dealer, but I kind of like the idea of like a blood mage. I guess we'll take you. And then we'll pick an item. Attack and crit, or attack speed and crit is probably what I'm going for. Attack speed and spell power. Do you guys scale off of spell power? You do. Your attack speed and ethereal amplification scale off of spell power. That's interesting. <clears throat> you also scale off of spell power. So we're probably looking at this then. So who do we want to have what? These guys probably aren't going to critically strike, so I'm thinking you take that. Wait, where'd it go? Oh, I don't have the... I forgot I didn't press the button to show the item. Um, but then... How exactly do each of you work? You gain attack speed. I kind of think it's more valuable on you. Okay, so unfortunately we're kind of using a DPS character as a tank, but that's that's what we got at the moment, so. Let's, it seems like it's going to be fine. The problem is, is he doesn't have any lifesteal. He has no form of sustain at the moment. Crew to hero, we would really like a tank. What are you? Support with shields. When the hero gets below 50% for the first time, they gain 12% lifesteal and 30 attack damage. I assume that's for the rest of the match, which is pretty good. Cast shield orbs, giving a shield to all heroes and increasing their attack damage. Ooh. That's interesting, works a lot better with physical attackers, but could still be fine for everyone else. We've used this before. This character was interesting, giving everyone attack speed. We just kind of like stacked crit. I think we're going to go with this guy, though. 
And pick an item. Okay, here we have a recipe. Um, so I'll explain how recipes work in a second. But first, let us... Receives a shield. Okay. That seems pretty good for us. We don't really need frost, so let's take this. Okay. Oh. Okay, they're, they're explaining how recipes work. Essentially, we could go here and we can combine a recipe with, I guess they're calling them heirlooms, and that makes like a full item. Um, so, how much defense does this guy actually have? 30, this guy has 35. This says total shield. So does that mean that, does he have to cast this first for that to work? And increasing their attack, but like how long does that last would be my question. Cause shields last indefinitely in this game until they're destroyed. So if he casts this and say this guy already has a lot of shield because I'm giving him this recipe, does he just permanently keep all that extra attack damage? I would assume yes. I don't see any reason why not. So now he gets the stats of the item plus the recipe and he's going to get a shield e equal to 30 or equal to 100% of his defense, which is 35 uh, every five seconds. And assuming that that stacks with this, once this guy casts, um, I guess it's not going to be that much. This guy's shield is going to be bigger, right? He's going to give 100 shield, but it's only 1% attack damage, I noticed, so we're not going to be getting all that much. At least not now. But maybe we can like stack some shields or something in the future. So debuffs, is there anything new here? We have four different debuffs. Um, bleed scales with attack damage, a crit. Because I think crit makes bleeds always go off, right? Yeah, critical strikes guarantee bleed. Um, Every attack heroes have a 25% chance to increase the damage of the attack by 1.5% of the bleed. Spell damage is increased by 3% uh, per frost on the enemy. Every attack heroes deal ethereal damage equal to the amount of burns. So we have ethereal characters and we have a character that does burns. So this is going to be pretty useful. Um, other ethereal damage from abilities and effects is increased by 1.5% per burn. On cast, heroes have a 1.5% chance per shock to stun their target for one second, increases their duration of other stuns by 2.5% per shock. So it seems like we got the burn synergy going on at the moment. Are you the tank then now? Kind of seems like it. So we probably just draw aggro onto you. Although maybe we should make this guy the tank. So you. If you haven't seen this game before, you might be like, um, how do you get your heroes better? Because at the moment, the heroes, like we're not picking up a whole bunch of duplicates of heroes like we would in like a TFT or something, right? So um, what's been happening is every single match uh, that a hero plays in, they get two XP. Um, and you can see that they're all rank one at the moment. It takes 20 XP to get to rank two. But we can also give them these trophies down here, which I think the game will tell us about in a moment. Um, but each trophy uh, gets gives them 5 XP. Um, and we have been earning these trophies every single match that we've won so far. So, who else is going to synergize with our team? We got a melee physical damage dealer who can self-heal. Gains lifesteal per missing health. In addition, if above 65% max HP, he consumes 10% max HP to gain 15% attack damage. That seems pretty good, but doesn't necessarily synergize. We've used this guy before. 
What do you do? You're another ethereal damage dealer, and you're a crit guy. Every critical strike, the hero's critical strike chance is increased by 1.5% plus 0.3% per summon. Oh, it's a summon synergy. We don't really have summons. Every critical strike, Leem forges an ancient arrow. Active. Leem forges two additional ancient arrows and fires all ancient arrows in quick succession at his current target. Each ancient arrow deals 100% attack damage and cannot critically strike. Okay, so he's essentially stacking these arrows by critically striking, and then when he casts, he stacks two more and then shoots them all. That's interesting. What works the best for our team here? So we have a melee DPS, kind of like a support melee, and then two ranged DPSs. So I feel like... I don't think this is going to be our final squad. You do get some extra heroes. So I kind of think we should throw this guy in just so we have another off tank, kind of. Because currently at the moment we don't have a dedicated tank. So I think we do that. Pick an item. Critical strike chance. Okay, so plus three max mana is red because you cast your abilities with when your mana reaches full. Um, you have both a mana regen stat as well as you regen one mana every single auto attack. So attack speed is good for that, but if you increase the max mana, it obviously is going to take you longer to be able to cast. So that's could be good, could be bad, depending on the character. At the moment, I think all of our characters kind of want to cast. What do you do again? Gain permissing. Okay. Is there anyone who would really benefit from the crit? Now, this character's inflicting bleeds. But that doesn't mean that this character needs to be the one critting. I guess maybe we just give it to this guy temporarily. Or we could actually increase his defense. I'm gonna go with that. We increase his defense a lot then. So here you can see mana regen. Um, and mana regen, does anyone have any? Yeah, here it is. So mana regen is the amount of mana you regen in 10 seconds. So you can see here this hero is regening a one mana every 3.3 seconds. Because we have three mana regen. Um, so if you had 10 mana regen, you'd be regening 1 mana every second. <clears throat> I'm looking at attack speed here. Does anyone benefit? Uh, so you can see that these items are all gray, so they're kind of like the worst tier of items. So, like, this is the weakest bell power item, right? And I don't know if that's actually worth it, whereas attack speed could just be a lot better. Because we could put attack speed on anyone and it's beneficial in these kinds of games. So I'm going to take the attack speed. Because attack speed is kind of like mana regen as well. Because of how I just explained it. What do we want then? You already have some attack speed. Oh, you can see here the tutorial has kind of um, things that we're supposed to do. To finish the tutorial um we'll probably just get them done as we go we don't really have to prioritize them too heavily who do i want the attack speed on i mean we want this guy to use his ability quicker but like is that actually worth it we'll give this to you because now you will get 83 shield I mean, we could just stack everything on you but is that kind of not smart? Possibly. How much does that give? Oh, what? Didn't actually... Why is it not? There we go. Doesn't give that much. Whereas this is kind of like a bigger boost. Because this person already has some attack speed coming in. And this character doesn't have any attack speed yet. Okay. 
so here we have an event or like a random happening while exploring the area you discover a very dark cave six eyes are lurking at you from the shadows you also notice a very interesting pouch of gold sitting right behind those six eyes what do you do fight if victorious gain 12 trophies 12 additional so we get 15 trophies and 130 gold juke dodge juke again steal and run gain the gold and flee i would like the trophies so i will fight so here it's just kind of explaining how to use your trophies um and what ranks do for you how it works as you can see here we have one passive ability at rank two we get a second passive and at rank four we get a third passive um, and then the other ranks that aren't two or four uh, will give you attribute ups and you will get a choice between four attribute ups. So now is probably a good time to level up so we can ensure victory here. Um, since trophies give five each, you could see that we could level this guy up with three trophies. Everyone else, oh, you also would level up with three trophies. So that's kind of probably the best value we could get is leveling up two characters here with three trophies. What button do you press again? Oh, you press T. Oh, you have to hold T. But you can also middle mouse click if I remember. Yes, you can. So here you can see that this guy's reached rank two. So he has a choice of three different passives. On cast, we can gain 10% attack speed which is pretty good for you, right? Oh, also, we want to do this because that's a tutorial thing. Um, and we can read what each of the guys do. You can see that this bat is actually has two stars, so he's rank two, so he's very strong. This fight might actually be a little bit difficult, but we're gonna get 15 trophies for it, so. Yeah, that's that guy's gonna be tough. He just deals, he essentially just has lots of life steal. Is itself an enemy's Okay, so we need to deal with these two on the side first because this guy is going to be almost impossible to kill. Anyways, how you work is you are going to be increasing your attack speed as you cast more. And this also, this is a permanent attack speed buff. Every four seconds the hero heals the lowest percent HP hero for 60 plus 50 percent spell power you have no spell power and this is every four seconds this isn't we can't change that timer whenever mana regen generates mana the hero gains three percent shield received caps at 45 percent shield additionally the hero's HP is consumed before their shield unless they are below Interesting, that doesn't really synergize with this character too well, though. He doesn't get anything for being low HP, so I think we just go with this. Let's get more attack speed, and then we are going to level you up as well. Every time you crit, which your crit is not high, so I don't know if that's going to do it for us. You do have mana regen, so that could maybe do it. And then who had... Did you have... No, I don't think we picked the character who had a synergy with summons. The hero gains four spell power per summon on the field. There's just two blue drakes that don't do anything, but they just count as two summons. Um, and they die when the hero dies, so you lose those two summons. But So what do we actually want here? I mean, this will do something. Team speed, so there is a mechanic in this game to swap passives with another character. You, can, you can't swap your first passive, you can only swap your two and your four. Um, so I'm thinking that this might be an angle where there's not really any good option. Maybe the blue drakes is the option though. Because this, if we could swap this onto a guy with a lot of crit, then he could very quickly give the entire team 10% attack speed, right? Um, I think the Blue Drakes is actually the best. Just because we get 8 spell power out of it. This character is a spell power character. And then every other summon that we have access to will just make this character 
better. So yeah, let's go with that. Okay, let's place... How are we gonna do this? So we kind of have three melee characters. I think we try and get everyone to focus the wolf. Um, and we just hope that our AoE takes these two down quickly. Oh, good, the wolf went for that. But this guy's still gonna die pretty quickly. Ooh, that is not good. Okay, so every time a hero dies, we lose health down here. You can see flame is our health. Um, so it's not just if we win, it's every time a hero dies, and you can see that we're losing multiple heroes. Um, it's not looking good at the moment. Uh, we might just straight up lose our entire squad. Yeah, this guy doesn't have what it takes. Okay, well that was just a straight wipe. Um, I've never wiped before, or at least I didn't wipe in the prologue. Here... Taking on that challenge, I guess, was a mistake. It was slightly too difficult for us. Um, and we lost 30 health for it. I think you lose 6 per unit that died. But on a boss, if you lose to a boss, you just straight up lose. So, at least this wasn't a boss. <clears throat> so we miss out on all those rewards. We still get a little bit of something. Okay, I'm looking at this armor first. Wear gains 1% for every shock. For 3 seconds to wear heals the lowest HP. When the wearer receives damage. I, I would assume that consuming HP and receiving damage are not the same. So I don't think putting this on someone who's consuming HP works. But that doesn't mean that this is bad. I think this is still good. I think I'm still going to take that. That was kind of lame. We do have this fight recap here. Where we can see how the fight went for us and what character did what. You can see that this character did the most damage. Our other spellcaster did the second most damage. This guy did the third most damage. And then you can see our support actually did the fourth most damage, but that's because this guy died first. This guy also shielded for a lot. And this guy, he didn't really stack up his shield that much. Yeah, that was just kind of lame, huh? Unfortunate. So now we have an elite fight. Um, here it's explaining what I already explained about the stars next to characters um, having different ranks. And then here it's explaining an elite fight that usually rewards an extra hero and relic won't be granted these. So if you lose a fight like you just saw that we lost a fight, we don't get all the rewards that you would get for winning the fight. Um, and then here it's explaining that bosses, uh, when they kill a unit, they deal 7, 14, 21, 28, and 35 damage. And if you lose to a boss, you lose the run. So... We have four trophies, enough to probably level up another character, which I think we probably need to do. And I think it needs to be the support dude. So what does he get? When the fight starts, the hero summons two bronze drakes, which would help with this guy as well. So he would get more spell power. The hero gains 2% attack speed per summon. So the you can see where the drakes are kind of coming together because we already have someone who has drakes. So not only am I getting 4% attack speed from this, I'm actually getting 8% because this guy already has summons. Uh, we probably don't need this guy to be doing damage. Giving him a chance to stun is good, but I think I'd rather just have the summon synergy here. And then, so we just got an item. I think we'll combine it with that, because we're probably going to give whoever's being our tank that. So he'll be taking the damage, so it makes sense. And then whenever you forge an item, it unequips the items, so you just have to re-equip it. And then you can press shift here to see what items they have equipped. Anyways, um... I think we kind of send you off over here. And then we still want everyone to aggro onto you. What do you do? 
removes two mana from all heroes. That's annoying. Um, so we still don't have any healing is the big problem that I'm running into. Every other run... Oh, that guy died. Yes, we lose some health. Every other run I've done, I've had a support that could heal. And that is not happening this time. So we're just ending up with units dying a lot. <clears throat> Every second the wearer consumes a frost. Okay, we don't do any frost. Every five seconds the wearer gains a shield equal to 100% spell power. That's pretty decent. Wearer gains mana regen equal to how far they are from other heroes. One mana per hex range. That's also interesting. Do you have any mana regen? Bonuses? I don't think so. So the thing about grabbing that is if it works how I was saying earlier, if we gave that to this guy, then he would be getting a shield and then whenever this guy uses his thing, this guy would get more um, attack damage. Now his attack damage is kind of not good. So I don't know if that's exactly ideal. The problem though is no one else has any spell power. So this doesn't really do anything on anyone else, but we have shield synergy, so I'm kind of tempted. But this would also, this mana regen would go good on him. Because he's going to be at least one hex away. He attacks at three hexes, so maybe we can, like, finagle a way to put him, like, around the backside of a of the map. So, like, say our tank is over here and uh, he's over here, um, and the enemy's right here. Uh, we would be able to attack the enemy, but we would be four hexes away from our hero, right? I'm going to take that. And then we will combine... Actually, we should pick a Relic first, just in case. All heroes gain more Ethereal Amplification. Uh, we could get three Bleeds every four seconds. I don't really like the Hexile buffs, because it... it Like, if you've seen TFT, sometimes you have, like, Hexes that give you a special bonus. This essentially just makes it so every single fight, there's two random Hexes that have the bonus. But I feel like it forces you to position poorly. I'm really looking at... I think Bleed Orb is the best for us. 20% attack damage is good for some of our heroes, but we don't have that much attack damage yet, so I think the Bleed Orb is going to do the most. Now let's go ahead and forge this and this. Give this back to this guy. We don't have enough trophies to level someone else up. Um, we definitely want to go to the campfire because that lets us pick an origin here. I also should also re-roll an item. Um, so an origin is kind of like, it's it's almost like a relic essentially, but you can only have one origin. Um, I've never re-rolled an origin. I assume it takes one action to re-roll an origin. So here what we can do at the campfire is we can rest, heal for 25. We can enchant... Um, which upgrades a rare item into an epic item, and that costs us 15 health. Um, or we can reroll our origins. And so origins, we can only have one origin, but it's free. Every time we reach a campfire, we essentially get a set of six origins that we can pick from. If we already have an origin, then we can choose to replace it for free with one of the new origins, but we cannot have two origins. Or at least I haven't seen, maybe there's a way to get two origins, but I haven't seen that. So whenever a hero gets below 55% HP, the hero gains 35. That could be good because our tank currently has no way to heal and that would help us a lot. When a hero gets below 40% HP, all heroes enter time shift. All heroes gain full mana and the lowest HP gets healed for 20% of spell damage. Spell damage done during this effect. Okay, we don't have a lot of spell damage, but this would be okay. I've used this one before. Out of the two runs that we did, that was one of the ones that I used. 
All heroes gain percent spell power equal to 3% of the team's bonus max HP. We don't have any bonus max HP at the moment, so that's not relevant. For every critical strike dealt, all heroes gain 3 spell power. I've used this one as well. This one has been my favorite one. Because um, it's just a way to get spell power for everyone, right? Um, every 3 seconds, the lowest HP hero receives a heal equal to 10%. We don't have bonus max HP, so that doesn't help us. All heroes gain spell power equal to 20% of the hero with the highest attack damage. We don't have a hero with a lot of attack damage, so that's not really wrong. So we're looking at either of these two, right? Um, what do you get? You're just going to get more damage. The problem is, is that one's so good, right? Like, everyone's just gonna... Although, this guy gets nothing out of it, I see. I think we have to take this, because it's the only way... I mean, this, I guess, could have a similar effect. We're essentially... We're trying to get a way to make our melee DPS into a tank. This would give us more damage, but... This is the only way to make him tankier. So, we'll take that. Um, we're kind of getting low health, but at the same time, we're currently playing on easy difficulty every time you beat a final boss. Can we see the map? Every time we beat a boss, so this is Act 1, this would be the Act 1 boss, uh, we currently receive 90 health back. <clears throat> so assuming that we're going to win that, all we need to do is make sure we don't die on the way there. So I think I'm going to enchant an item. Which, if I remember correctly, it only enchants the recipe. By holding shift. Yeah, it only enchants the recipe. So this is 200% defense shield. This makes it 60% chance. This gives 2 mana. Oh, and it also... I didn't realize this gave 1 mana regen. At its base. Oh, I just activated sticky keys. <laughs> so obnoxious. Um, I think this, right? Because this makes our dude harder to kill. Yeah, I think that's the best. And then I could do this, but then I'd be worried that we might die before we actually get to the boss, so I'm gonna heal. Um, and I am going to fight another elite. And then, so damage types here, it's just explaining when we look at that fight recap, uh, all the different things that we see. So we have ethereal damage, spell damage, physical damage, shielding, and healing. Um, and you can read through that if you want to on your own playthrough, but anyways. <clears throat> so, you're gonna go there. You want to be far away. So I could, in theory, put you here, right? There's actually no downside to that. And then you might as well just be over here. And then we make everyone go towards you. Ooh, they stun us. But this guy didn't get stunned. This guy's still gonna die? Oh my goodness. We have so much stuff to try and make him stay alive, but it's just not enough. This is why I healed, though, because apparently we're still dying. <clears throat> Attack damage and crit. Mana regen and defense. Attack speed. I should reroll just so we finish the tutorial. Crit damage. Spell power. I don't know what to do. We need to somehow make you live. How do how the heck do we keep you alive? He's just not a tank is the problem. And we're being forced to use him as a tank because we haven't gotten a new hero. I think we just got to give him attack speed and attack damage. So that's the way that he heals. Then give this to our damage dealer. Pick a relic. Maybe we could pick something that will help us live. Team size increase. But everyone is damaged at the beginning of a fight. That's interesting, but we don't have enough to do that yet. Two critical strike chance hexes. 
team si another team size increase, all heroes get plus one max mana when the fight starts. That's not that bad. Also, this is not that bad either. But I think everyone getting life steal from the start is probably it. Cause like our heroes already work with life steal pretty well. So make you stronger. Make you stronger. So you at your base already have six mana regen. You could see that he had nine before we equipped that item. That's just because in the previous fight, he had nine. That's the damage breakdown. Pretty much what we expect. This guy's doing a lot more than I thought he would. It's a shame that this guy's just dying so quickly, but hopefully all the things that we've done, we want to go to a shop because we have that shop bonus. Okay, there's an old dwarf saying that if a champion finds a dwarven weapon which doesn't cut its hand, the champion and his weapon reunited shall unleash the power of a mountain. All the weapons in my possession make my hand ble bleed. Believe me, I tried them all, but maybe one of your heroes is the destined champion. To find the champion's weapon, you will have to cut your hand with every weapon one by one. I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep going. Ooh, okay. We receive both of these. For every four seconds, the wearer receives a heal equal... Oh, we don't have any frost. Every five seconds, the wearer stuns their current target or bleed. Okay, so the problem is, I guess we... That one recipe doesn't help us right now. So we don't have any way to put frost on. I'm thinking because this guy's the guy applying bleed, so it's likely that his target will have the most bleed. I'm thinking we do that. Oh, I, I did that a lot in the beta too. I'd hit escape too many times. Okay, so we need to make something happen. Do we have any tanks? You're a ranged damage dealer. You're also a healer. How, how does that work? Uh, you get critical strike chance. In addition, critical strikes heal himself and the lowest HP target for X. Maybe. Every three attacks, the hero inflicts one frost. In addition, critical strikes inflict one frost. Okay, here's... You're another damage dealer. So I, I think I'm just going to go straight over to you because you have a healy thingy next to you. To its current target, stunning the target for two seconds and taunting it also heals himself. All excess heal is converted into shield and all heroes also get half of that shield. Oh, he only heals himself. But he taunts, right? He only taunts his target. But this would give us a tank. So I'm thinking we're going to grab this. You can also see that um, heroes are pretty cheap. Also, common items are pretty cheap. Um, and we have some recipes here. And dismantle, I'm pretty sure you could just take a recipe and an item and remove them from each other. But it costs you gold. So we kind of... We need to do stuff. We have gold and everything's cheaper, right? Every five attacks to wear gains 1% attack speed for each bleed on the target. Okay, that's pretty good. Every four seconds the wearer heals for 200% spell power. I don't know how many spell So I think I'm definitely going to get this guy. This guy's just so interesting and he would be able to use the frost thing we just got. But, like, I'm looking, and he's not really healing <laughs> that guy for very much. <laughs> Let's get that guy. Um, max health. How, do you, how does this guy work? Percent of max health. So getting him more max health would be beneficial. So we could buy him, like, the armor and the leather boots. 6% chance per max mana to gain one mana regen. How much max mana do you have? Eight. 
That would give this character some crazy mana regen, probably. We'd have like a 48% chance to get an extra mana. How often is that? Every two seconds. 30% attack damage. Every second the wearer deals ethereal damage equal to 50%. The wearer is damaged for 100% of physical... Ooh. That's not great. Critical strikes by the done by any hero inflicts a bleed on all enemies. This item is only operative when the wearer is the top damage dealer. Ooh, that's going to be hard for us to control, possibly. Where two attacks the wearer heals for ten times the amount of bleed and frost. That's pretty good. Where it gains attack damage equal to how far they are from other heroes. That's not going to be useful for us. So, I'm looking at this, this, maybe this. We, we got to count, right? Because we could spend too much. This is 500-ish, 600. And we can only afford one of these two items. But we could maybe get these basic items. Ooh. It's a lot of spell power, but probably not worth it because it takes away so much attack speed. So I'm thinking we buy both of these and these three. Let's do it. We should probably spend all of our gold right now just because... Which of these, actually? Oh, I can't get both of these. I think attack speed's better. I'm gonna go for the attack speed here. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the final boss. Um, here it's kind of teaching you that characters are going to prioritize the best target. So you can see here, even though he's attacking this guy, when he uses his skill, it's going to prioritize the biggest group that it can hit. Um, so you can kind of control your own positions to make sure that enemies don't have good priority targets to hit. And then here it's just telling us we beat the tutorial. So, how do you work? Best targeting. Cast Chaos Eruption and then Death Chains alternating. Highest damage dealer. If the chains are not destroyed within 6.5 seconds, the chained hero takes 99% as damage. Okay, so this is going to be awkward. We also need to change this. This guy's like our third highest damage dealer, so I think he needs to go for the tank. We don't have any trophies is a problem. The question is... Combine these two. Well, that doesn't do anything for us. I think I make the wolf. <sighs> no, the, the person taking the damage needs to heal. And then the wolf can have this. Okay, so now we need to give everyone these items. So you are gonna have really good mana regen. Q. 
You are just... You're now a damage dealer, because you no longer are forced to be the tank. You're the tank. Hopefully you will stay alive. Although you should have this, then. Here's the awkward part, because now this shield... But this shield is going to benefit from this, so maybe that's fine. But you no longer have all that defense. But this guy gets his own shield. So, the problem that we're going to run into is these chains... How is the damage split? Is also dealt to the chains. So this guy's gonna probably be the guy targeted by the chains. And then we need everyone else who's attacking the boss to break the chains by attacking the boss, essentially. So what I wanna do is I wanna do that. I wanna give him not good targets, I think. And we should stay as far away from you as possible. How big is this? It's not that big, so his best target's gonna be these two. And they should be able to live with all of our stuff here. So. Let's see how this is going. I'm really curious how this is gonna go when the chains activate. Oh, this guy's the highest damage dealer? Okay. Well, that's actually fine, because this guy's incredibly hard to kill. And everyone has lifesteal. Yeah, that was pretty straightforward and easy. So, you can see here, we heal for 90. Um, so what I kind of figured out in the prologue is that I probably want to pick this up last, because if I want to reroll an item or something, I can spend my health right now and then get it all back. Let's recruit a hero. Do we have anything useful? Shielder. He shields himself. He takes advantage of shields. I've seen this ability before. So this guy's just gaining shields all the time. Scales with his shield. That's okay. Unfortunately, I kind of like what we have already, so I don't think I want to do that. Another burn. Another ethereal. This is kind of the part of the game where I'm like, I, I kind of actually like the squad that we have. So I think I'm probably not going to use a new character, but if we get one of those relics that increases our party size, we should probably pick something that would fit well into our team. What I really want is another support, honestly, so I kind of feel like this choice doesn't help that much. Okay, another legendary thing. Minus one max mana. Every four seconds the warrior casts hail spikes around them, dealing 30 spell damage per frost. We don't have frost still. The warrior gains 150% heal received, 150% shield received, and their range is increased by one hex range. When taking damage from an enemy, this effect is lost for the rest of the fight. Oh, I was going to do that for my tank, but... So that's only relevant for someone who gets benefits from shields, but isn't going to get hit. Which would be you, I guess. But I don't think that's good enough. I think it's actually very likely that he's just going to accidentally get hit by something. Every four seconds, the wear heals for four or for 200% spell power. Additionally, when the wear overheals, they gain a shield. Do you, does this guy have any spell power? No. Okay, I mean, I don't really want any of these. <laughs> yeah, it's a reroll. 50% attack speed, every attack the wearer gains plus six heal received. Whenever you deal damage, gain a shield equal to 20% of the damage though. That's gonna be useful. What else do you do with your shield? All heroes also gain, oh, so that's a little bit. 
Who else could gain a shield? Nah, I think that's not worth it because it doesn't work on our tank. Heroes inside the aura get 25% attack speed. The wearer loses when the fight starts. I think we just want this. And I'm kind of thinking it's probably... We don't have an item for you to put it on at the moment. So we'll be looking for another item, but it's probably going to this guy, because wasn't that guy our highest damage yet? I guess he was second highest. I need to stop doing that. Okay. Pick a relic. Whenever you pick an origin or change your origin, you heal for 25 and gain 250 gold. So this is a use item. You gain 75% of the gold that you currently own. Well, we have no gold right now, so that's probably not good. You can now research at the shop for eight trophies. I think an additional action at the campfire is probably it. Although I probably am going to do that. I probably am going to change our origin, but let's do this. Um, and we're going kind of slow at the moment, but that's okay. I mean, we still don't have that much experience with this game. I think we'll try and get through like halfway through Act 2 here. Um, and then we'll split the episode. So, shops are beneficial for us. Because we have 30% reduced shop costs. Now the problem is, is if you go for all the shops, you cannot hit any campfires. We probably don't need to hit this shop because we don't have enough money. We're kind of looking at it. This right path seems like not good. And then it doesn't really matter which one of these you pick. I feel like we want to go to a campfire so we can get a new origin, and we haven't done any of these star ones yet. Okay, so here's where it's going to get a little bit more interesting, because now we have two groups of enemies. And to make them both target the tank, he kind of has to sit like that, but then it gets interesting. As you can see here, this guy is closer than this guy to here. So we can't make him target the tank. So I think it might make the most sense to just put the tank in front of these guys. And then have these two guys fight there. We go boop, boop, like that. I think both sides should be able to stay alive. Maybe we should hold up, rank up this guy so he lives more. What can we get? Every time you critically strike, you, you have like no crit chance. Every four seconds you heal, the hero heals the lowest HP hero. Okay, more, more summons. Hero summons two red drakes, which do not attack. The hero gains four attack damage per summon. So we're gonna do that because now we have six summons, right? We have two bronze drakes, two red drakes, two blue drakes. So that means that everyone's getting a lot more bonuses. And you can see that these are all the debuffs on enemies. We're applying a lot of debuffs now. We can also pull up how our characters are doing over the course of a fight. That seems to be going fine. I think the tank is going to live fine. Yeah, went very well. Uh, the wearer's attacks have a 50% chance to inflict one shock. So this guy already does shock every two attacks to all enemies. So we might put that on him. On cast, the wearer gains 10% attack damage. Every attack, the wearer heals the lowest HP hero for two times max mana. You have a lot of max mana. 
And that's, that's how often? Every attack. That's got to be really good for this guy, right? This guy's going to be attacking like crazy. You could see at the end of that last fight, he was at 1.85. And his max mana is 10. So that means every attack is healing the lowest guy for 20. Which is pretty decent. But the problem is we don't have an item to put on him still. I kind of wanted to put that on him as well. So you can see that all of these would be pretty good, right? How The problem is I don't know how many times this guy casts. He doesn't have that much attack damage though, so maybe that's not quite worth it yet. I definitely think this healing pouch is it. I just don't know what to put it on. I could put it on this, but then uh, we have to go to a shop to remove it from that. So I think I just sit on this for a little bit. This is also good, but let's just grab that. And then fight recap. I mean, you could either go to the fight recap or you could look over here and see. Um, it's just a little bit easier to see on the fight recap, all the breakdowns and all the buffs and stuff. You can see that this uh, bleed orb, how effective that was. It tells you all the different statuses that you inflicted. So lots of, I like that the game gives you lots of information about what happened. So we're going this way. We're going to try and pick a new origin. So here you could see. Um, so we want everyone to be far away from you. So you have more mana regen. I think this should work. I didn't really look at what these guys do. That guy's like a healer. Yeah, we have a lot of AoE, so these guys have a problem. Yeah, we're just kind of ripping through them at the moment. This guy is getting a little low, though. Yeah, the, the Fire Mage continues to do the most damage. Okay, so now we could grab an item put this on. This gives attack speed. So I think like the obvious choice is that, right? Does anyone have any crit synergy though? Can't remember. I don't think anyone has crit synergy. So, I think... How much crit do you have? 18. So giving you 12% more crit. Probably good, because it'll synergize with the bleeds that we already do. Ooh. Obviously, spell damage would be good for this guy. Mana regen would also... This guy doesn't have anything. This guy also doesn't have anything. Oh, whoops. So maybe we need to like get an item for this guy to make him a little bit more effective. Mana regen and defense is the most obvious one, I think. Because he gets a little bit of attack speed out of his bronze drakes. And he has no mana regen, right? Yeah, he has zero mana regen. Spell power. I don't know how well spell power scales with you. I assume it's just one to one. Could look into making the blood mage better though. The blood mage we haven't ranked up at all yet. And they're getting pretty close to ranking up on their own. We should use trophies next. Um map as well. No, I don't really know. It's a tough one. Is there anything I would want to combine it with? I guess this is probably the primary target. Which probably means you're going for this because then you got more attack speed coming in. Oh, 
the heal received is only for the wearer. Taking this. So that creates a little bit of confusion because... I guess... Because our tank doesn't really look like he's gonna die ever. This guy's the guy who looks like he's gonna die. But I guess it, he'll just heal himself then, right? With this. But you take that. And then I think you take this. I still just don't see a good place to put this quite yet. We'll see if, like, if we need it for our tank, we could put it on our tank. Okay, so here we're looking for a new origin. For every summon on the battlefield, all heroes gain extra shield received. Additionally, every four seconds, all summons gain attack damage equal to 5% of the team's shield total. So this is kind of awkward, right? Obviously, it synergizes well with the fact that we have six summons. So all heroes are going to get, uh, what is that, 90% extra shield received, which is good because we get a lot of shield. However, none of our summons can attack. There are summons that can attack. I had one of my two runs had a character who made summons that can attack. Um, so none of our summons can gain attack damage. So that second part is worthless to us. This is interesting, but how much crit do we actually have? This guy's the only guy who really has a good chance to crit, so I don't think that's very good. For every summon on the battlefield, all heroes gain 6 spell power. So this is 36 spell power for everyone. That's actually pretty good. All heroes gain lifesteal equal to 0.5% max HP of the hero with the highest max HP. 0.5%. You... Of 1700. So that would mean we would get like eight. <laughs> That's not exactly great. Heroes and effects inflict twice the amount of shock on enemies. When the fight starts, heroes. No, I don't want that. Heroes and effects. Okay. I'm tempted to reroll. Like, this is okay because we have six summons. We do lose that, but that isn't that necessary anymore. Do I just take the six spell power for everybody? It essentially doubles your spell power, so that's pretty good. I think I just take the six spell power for everybody. Although stacking shields could be pretty good. The problem is we can't reliably crit a whole bunch. We have one guy who has essentially a one-third chance to crit. So I think it's gotta be... Uh, yeah. Okay, and then I will probably just enchant twice and rest once. Oh, we should... Look at this. Four times. That's pretty good. I'm... I'm Trying to be careful to not sticky keys. Is this, does this, okay, it stacks two every time. I think it's just these two, right? Because that this gives our team uh, incredible healing, right? Because this guy is going to heal more, and then he's going to attack faster, so he'll heal more. Then we just rest up, so we're mostly back at full. 
Um, and we're going to go to the elite and then we'll go ahead and take a break there. Trophies. So you can see the trophies were bouncing around. I assume they want us to use them just because we got a few stacked up. Right now, everyone is rank two except for you. So it might be prudent to get you to rank two right now. We have eight trophies. It would cost us one. So we'd have seven left. Seven is 35 XP. So this guy's kind of like the linchpin of our whole team. It would take us four trophies to level him. Uh, we didn't talk about Enrage at all. Enrage here it shows like what it does after 20 seconds into the fight. Essentially the enemies just get a lot stronger so you can't like run an infinite stall comp or something. And it just keeps, they keep getting stronger and stronger every five seconds after they enrage. And then it also shows you how much life you lose or flame you lose every time a unit dies. So, I could, uh, the problem is I could level up two units if I don't level up you. But we kind of want, like, you're good. I think you need to be a little bit stronger. Ooh, more drakes. Let's look at the other things. Every time the hero casts their ability, two random heroes receive one mana. That's okay. Um, if we had, like, what's your... I guess you cast decently quickly. Because you have low max mana. But you don't, you don't have a lot of mana regen, so at the moment you're not just, like, printing mana for the team. When gaining a shield from any source, the hero gains 1% attack speed for each hero, and summon on the battlefield stacks 50 times. I mean, that's pretty good, but I think the bronze drakes are just better because we have so many other drakes. This now makes it so we have 8. So this is 16% attack speed. What are you getting? You're getting 32 spell power. This guy's getting 32 attack damage, and you're also getting 16% attack speed. So yeah, it's got to be the attack speed. So this, I think, was the right choice. It was an easy way to get a whole bunch of people buffs. The only guy who didn't get a buff out of that is this guy. So, do, do we then level you up, though? I think so. Because... Hmm, this is where it's going to get difficult. He already has a lot of attack speed, and he scales his attack speed a lot. Get him max health. I think we just get him attack damage. Like, he doesn't have a lot of attack damage. Let's do that. Alright, and then we don't have enough trophies to level anyone else up. So, Tank, I think you're going to go in the middle here. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how far this guy's gonna have to move up, but I assume putting him back here puts him too far away, so we might as well just put him there so he's gonna get into range faster. We'll go like this. So everyone's far away from this guy, but it's probably gonna end up like he'll be either here or here, so it's only gonna be one or two hexes away, but we'll see how it actually plays out. Like that. Okay, so well, it seems like one guy is going to go for this wolf, but I think the wolf should be fine. Oh, this guy actually is pretty far away still. Ooh, the laser beams are not enough damage, so we're not that weird. I don't know what was going on with this guy's health bar up here. It was just like, there was like two of his health bar. Okay, so I want to look at the fight recap. Yeah, this guy is going crazy now. This guy did 1,700 healing. <laughs> um, and I, I'm a little bit confused because you can see, like, the numbers on the bar. I guess that's the DPS is what it shows. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So do I, I don't really want it to be in per second. I'd rather have it be totals. Because we can hover over it and see the per seconds in the parentheses there. So yeah, we can see all the buffs that they had. Yep, yep, yep. 
Oh, he had he maxed this out. The sanguine blade thing. He maxed that out in that amount of time. However, he was not able to cast his ability four times, whereas this guy was able to cast it four times. A slightly harder encounter that rewards a bonus roll of your choice of victorious. Enemies have 15% attack speed buff. I didn't actually know what made it more difficult. That was kind of interesting. Okay, so more stuff. Every two seconds to wear. So what? Is there any items that aren't being used? Just that and the hat that don't have recipes on them yet. Every second the wear consumed, we don't have frost really. Cast the wear's max mana is increased by two and their attack damage is increased by two times max mana. For two seconds the wear has a 6% chance per max mana to gain one mana regen. Is your max mana 10? So you'd have 60. That could be pretty decent. I don't actually really like any of those. Warrior loses... Th oh, jeez. Okay. The warrior's attacks have a 50% chance to inflict burn to all enemies. Pretty good. Burn is pretty decent for us. Because it synergizes with our ethereal. We'd obviously like to give it to this guy, but... Uh, unless we get rid of these guardian gloves. Maybe we could... We'd have to find a new item first. Whenever the wearer critically strikes, the wearer deals 30 ethereal damage, and if they have at least 5 attack damage, they lose 5 attack damage. Ooh, I don't like that. I think I'm going to take this, but we can't really use it right now. Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier, where you can swap passives of people. What's better? The ultimate velocity or giving him the bronze drakes? That's a tough one. I I think it doesn't actually help us that much. You can also just change a passive, so essentially it just um you just pick that passive slot and it just gives you three new passives to choose from, and you could just choose to keep the old one. Um so yeah, I don't really see a reason to change, so I'm gonna do this. Which gives us trophies is the main reason. And then we have a melee support. Shields themselves, heals the party. Every 5 seconds the hero gains 60 plus 15 per summon. Shoots a bullet storm around her, dealing damage to nearby enemies and healing heroes in the bullet storm. I mean, I don't think we're going to be able to really use any of these heroes. I'll take you just because you're another support. But I don't think that's going to come into play. And so now we have like a full stack of heroes. You can only be holding eight heroes at a time. Or at least in the prologue you could only hold eight heroes at a time. Um, so we can dismiss them like this. And if they have... We could get trophies back depending on how much XP they had. None of these guys... I guess this guy has XP. 80% of it. Ow. I was like, he has above 5, he should give us a trophy back, but 80% uh, doesn't quite equal out. So we're going to do this elite, and then we're going to be about halfway through the run. Um, so we'll save the second half for next episode. Big angry guy, I remember big angry guy. So, let's go ahead, you go there. You want to be as far away from everyone as possible. How do you work again? He always attacks the lowest HP. So he just attacks the lowest HP. Which... You consume health, so you might become the lowest HP. We're just gonna hope that this guy's dead before that becomes a factor. Um, We should use some trophies, though. Let's give you three trophies. Magic steel. Do you need magic steel? Probably not. You'd probably just want 25 spell power, right? We have seven more trophies. With three, we could upgrade you. Get critical strike, mana regen. We probably want mana regen on you, huh?
Okay, and then four trophies is not enough at the moment. It's one away from that guy. So we'll just save it at the moment. You attract that guy's attention, and let's -a go. Oh, that is not how I wanted that to go. This could go poorly. We're just going to hope that this guy scales fast enough to keep this guy alive, but it's, I don't think it's going to work. Stun him or something! Stun more! Oh no, don't die! Oh, he's, he's stunned! Oh my gosh, he actually lived. So how did this guy... How did you become the lowest HP target? I think we just got unlucky since everyone was at 100%. I think he just chose a random target. Or maybe because you have the lowest max HP? Well, I guess you two are tied. Maybe it picked off of max HP because it's everyone's current HP. Or maybe I just read it wrong and it was max HP the whole time. Or it was like just lowest HP, which max HP counts towards that. Every attack the wearer has a 2% chance per frost and burn on the enemy that has the most of these debuffs to gain 4% crit and 8% critical strike. That's pretty good. We don't have an item that we can put that on right now. Actually, is it pretty good? I mean, I guess it would go on you, probably. But it wouldn't, because you do mostly spell damage, I think. This isn't... I mean, this is a great item. It would probably replace this, honestly. It's like, let's look at it. This guy's doing pretty much twice as much spell damage as physical damage. So, and we don't have, there's a, there's a way to make, I think it was called Omni Crit, which would make spells crit, but at the moment we don't have that, so. Apply three burns, that would help us. Heals the lowest HP target for 200 every four seconds. Whenever mana regen regenerates mana, they have a 30% chance to generate an additional mana. Minus two max mana, but lose attack speed. I'm thinking the burns, huh? I feel like this is just too slow. 200 max HP. Or 200 HP every four seconds. I think just more burns is going to be the most beneficial for us. Okay, and then we'll proceed. I guess we'll do the shop because the shop is not super exciting. How much money do we have? <clears throat> so here is a healer. I've used that healer before. Here's this guy again who's like a damage healer. Um, but I don't think we're looking for characters. Where's mana gets filled to full? Every three critical strikes. That would be amazing for you, huh? Okay, hold on. We need to think for a second, though. How do we do this the best way? So 2% chance per frost and burn. Unfortunately, it's only gonna be burn. Or that is good. This doesn't really make sense on the wolf, dude. Oh, that's... So this would just make wolf dude crazy. Because he's likely going to trigger that multiple times. Every second, all summons gain. That doesn't help us. That does. That's okay, but I don't think our tank is gonna get low. So this is crazy because you're just gonna be casting this all the time. As long as you can crit. The problem is your crit is a little low. So can we get you an item that gives you crit? this 
So what are you losing if we do that? We lose the attack speed, we gain some more crit. And we lose that shield thing, but we can give that to someone else. And then we put this on there. And then you're just constantly casting your ability. Gains ethereal and attack speed. Lasts for X attacks equal to half of his max mana. But it only lasts for five attacks. But that's fine because if in those five attacks he crits three times, which he'll be close to a 50% crit chance. Problem is we can't get him above a 50% crit chance yet. Actually, he won't be that close. He'll be like at like 34. But it'll still only be like one attack or so where he doesn't have this going. <coughs> and then what was the other thing? Is that? That's pretty good too, though. Pretty good too. All those things, like this synergizes really well with this. And this. All three of those synergize really well together. And the wear receives damage, they gain that. Okay, another one of those. Every second consume the wearer's HP equal to 2% to deal spell damage to all nearby enemies. Equal to three times the max H or the HP consumed. The fight starts, but their max mana is increased by 50%. So if I put all three of these on a character, Maybe I don't need to put all three of them on a character. Maybe that's foolish. I instead put this on the wolf so he could put more burns on people for someone else to be getting the frozen spear plus this. Who should get that though? You could get it. You already have some attack speed. What if we gave it to you? That could be kind of funny. <laughs> We're at a really weird juncture where we could make something interesting happen here. I think we give it to you because you actually use your attack damage and you gain more attack damage. I still haven't figured out if this guy's shields stack. They don't seem to stack for some reason. Although other shields seem to stack. This guy, when he casts again, it seems like the old shield goes away. I could be wrong though. But this guy just constantly shielding is probably pretty good too. So then we need some items for him. So first of all, this needs to go to someone else. Probably just gonna go to you, huh? And then the mana regen hat? I don't know who to put it on, so we're just gonna temporarily unequip that. How do I unequip? There we go. So we want this for the critical strike. Oh, do I even have enough money for all? Uh, no, I should, I think. No, I don't. I didn't think this through at all. Oh, I could do it if I buy these lame items. I can't afford both of these, so that kind of like ruins the whole thing, huh? Oh, but I am now realizing that you need to be able to critical strike for this to work. Which is why I wanted that. <laughs> Oh no. It's actually not very good. Oh, I think we have to not take this then. Oh, 
Oh, that's so unfortunate because this would synergize so well with it. But maybe I just buy all three of these to put things on? I have the hat, I guess. I could use this hat. And maybe it's not even worth it, actually. I wonder how this works. If, say, I critically strike, I critically strike, then I, like, cast my ability, and then I critically strike again. So the third critical strike is on a different amount of my mana. I assume it would immediately fill to full, so I just cast my ability twice in a row, essentially, right? But the first time would have taken the normal amount of time to get there. Well, we take the attack speed. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's so sad that we can't... Do I just buy this anyways? The pro no one has enough crit to really enable that, unfortunately, if we can't get the musket. So maybe I just grab the musket then? Okay, so the katana is going on you. Because you have so much attack speed. Do I give you the musket with it? Probably. Probably makes the most sense. Musket with the katana. Oh. This with the glove, because it gives uh, attack speed. And then, what do we got going on? So you take that. You, I guess, are taking that. And then... I don't really see a point to combining the other items. Like, does this really help us that much right now? No. It does give him... It could give this guy more attack speed, but... Probably not relevant enough. Okay. I could have dismantled stuff as well. I would probably dismantle that if I was going to dismantle anything, right? But I already made a mistake then, I think. Because so I should have taken that off and put it on the katana. Oh, I'm not doing that then. I don't want, then I'd have to do too much. It costs too much. Wouldn't be worth it. Well, I was a little bit disappointing. I saw a line, but we didn't have quite enough money to do it. Why are you glowing? Oh, because we're out of shop. Okay. Well, I'm going to pause the episode there. Um, and then we will continue with Act 2. And then we'll get into Act 3 for the first time uh, in the next episode. Hopefully. Assuming we don't die. But I don't think we will. We're pretty strong at the moment. Um, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this first episode of the full version of the game. So far, I have been liking this game a lot, and I hope you guys have been enjoying it as well. And I will see you in the next one.